Hello, it's Gray. Hello, it's Crystal. And this is Bus Asian Beauty a Supernatural Commentary Podcast where I, someone who has seen this show many times. And I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 5, Episode 5, Fallen Idols. Written by Julie Siege, directed by James L. Conway. Julie Siege, as I've said to Gray, should probably take a break from writing for a while, <laughs> I think. Well, what is Julie Siege's next episode? Let's see. Um, 512, Swap Meat. And then is that where problem. Sam's like in a teenage boy's body and vice versa? D- Dean. No, no, no. Dean is in a teenage boy's body in season 10. Dean's in a teenage is boy's body Sam? too? No, because doesn't Sam, ten. like, look doesn't... through his room and then he goes, virgin? <laughs> what? No, Dean, like, likes, I don't know, Taylor Swift. And that's a 2015 episode. Well, I think no, Swap Meat that, is doesn't Sam become, in a teenager's body. Like, Dean doesn't switch bodies with an existing yeah, teen. He, he becomes is just a teenager, a teenager himself. Sam switches yeah. body with a teenager. This is true. The last thing she writes is 99 Problems. Oh, which is incredibly misogynistic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, not a good run the, for Julie Siege. <laughs> is this the couch? <laughs> The it's yeah, the salmon cast the couch thing. Okay, couch yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is that incomprehensible to literally who has <laughs> incomprehensible to anyone who is not invested in such matters. They look at each other at the same time on a couch. That's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and it means nothing, or does it? <laughs> and it means everything to me and me. all Sassiel AMV makers. It does. It's very well synced. Yeah. Uh, this episode's good and so bad. It's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like every I mean, single honestly, joke, it's I like, found. I hate you, Julie Siege. But every single like Sam scene, it's like, I love you, Sam Winchester. And every single Dean scene is a toss up between, I hate this man so much, it's unreal. And, aww. <laughs> mm. So that's that's fun for me. Yeah. I also I felt like this is I keep on every single episode I say this. Have you noticed? This so is like, supernatural because we so <laughs> it's a real case episode that's unrelated to the apocalypse. Is that what you're gonna say? It is. <laughs> it is. I was so I was honestly quite happy about the case of it all. Like I yeah. love a case episode. I I'm beginning to come around. I kind of missed episodes. it. Like I yeah. missed it. Yeah, and I like, feel like the current ratio they have going is good. Like a two to one or a one and a half to one. Like enough to make me miss case episodes. Yeah, I I miss them. I love them. Uh, I also love that we are back to being funny. Like, mm. not not that I think Supernatural is funny. It's just that we're back to being light. Because I feel like the past few ones have been quite intense. Mm. And this one is like, they would do that, that fucking stupid guitar music that they do when something is supposed to be funny. You know the one, right? Yeah, you know yeah, the one. yeah. That. And, like, they do it this episode and I'm like, wow comedy i suppose <laughs> and it is a fun <laughs> uh yeah what did you know about this episode before going in other than paris hilton is here which honestly i didn't even i mean i knew of course i didn't know that she was going to be here for as little as she was mm. and also i didn't know that it was going to be this kind of paris hilton i thought she was going to show up and kill the monster with them or what? whatever i don't know. <laughs> Wait, you, but, but what about the, the fucking Oingo Boingo AMV of all the deaths in Supernatural where you see her head roll out? 
I am. I've. I have not. Then no one lives forever. Oinka Boingo. In the Oinka Boingo. I've talked about this before. You haven't remedied your ignorance regarding this AMV. No, unfortunately, I have not. Okay, well, it slays. Um, it literally probably slays. Yeah, it does. Like, literally. Okay, yeah. So I knew that Paris Hilton was there, and that she was gonna be the monster at some point, and that Sam was gonna behead her. Um, and I knew that the monster was someone who I didn't know it was heroes or fans. I think it was. I wrote down that it was like, like that it takes on the form of like the person you want to. be be the most or whatever so then like yeah. the monster runs across some teenage girls and turns into Paris Hilton and then Sam has to kill her that's all I knew well first of all the most important thing that in ever happens sequence. in this episode happens in the then sequence which yes. is that Sam goes Lilith was the final seal <laughs> oh that's not what I was talking about I was talking about that they finally got the video and audio synced up for like the <laughs> Sam and Dean like leaving each other in 502 scene no I mean the episode literally opens with Lilith was the final seal and I, I was like we're in for a ride and we truly were we were mm-hmm. really in for a ride with this one so yeah, Lilith was the final seal. And also, you know, remember last episode when I was like, when Dean says, you better be, or I'm sure you are, or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you better be. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> you better be is such a funny thing to think Dean said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when Dean says, uh, I know, I'm sure you will be, or whatever. Uh, and I was like, I was so scared of what he will say next because, like, mm-hmm. that sounds so ominous. They played that this episode and they removed the you're the second best hunter in the world line. Yeah. So it's just the ominous. And I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Mm. You enjoyed the editorializing. Yeah, of course. I enjoyed the narrative that is created by splicing clips of Supernatural. And you can just say anything. I still have not moved on that that person said that about my movie. Um, We start off in a good old, very, very classic before... What was it? What's this called? Cold Open. It is so fun to have a cold open that's just completely unrelated to anything that matters. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, it's so fun, so refreshing. Yeah, but uh, our cold open starts with these two guys, and they're like, one of them is like, "Dude, I got something that I can't tell you over the phone about, but it's here." And they go over, and there is this sheet that is covering something, and it took me. Until they unveiled it to realize it's a car. Like, there's a garage and everything. (laughs) And I still was like, I wonder what that is. (laughs) It's because it's shaped odd. Like, it's not the usual car Yeah, okay, I was flicking between car and, like, lumpy motorcycle for a while. Yeah. A real lumpy one. But, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's... The guy unveils it. And it's obvious that they both know this car. It's a little bastard. It's a Porsche. They're so they're both so excited. One of them was like about to hop into the car and turn it on, and then they were like, "Wait, no, no, no! We need to video it for posterity." And so one of the guys goes in, gets a camera, and then hears a noise that's like. Tire squeaking, glass shattering, blah, blah, blah. He comes back outside. His friend, or is it, is dead. So, yeah. R.I.P. Uh, I mean, w- what are stuff that matters in this scene? I mean, he's dead from, like, the windshield, like, going through his face. Yes, going into his head. Yeah, but the car has not moved which is, like, a pretty fun visual, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And, all, like, because the car is... I don't know. For those who don't remember <laughs> what Little Bastard looks like, which I did not know about until this episode. It's 
it's open. So like mm. the windshield is like just like yeah, a piece like of glass that's sticking out. Situation. Yeah. yeah. So if you rammed your face into it really hard, it it would be yeah. able to do something do bad. Yeah, and also, um, like. I was thinking about how this guy got the car because the way it's talked about is like it's so expensive Mm -hmm. and he's just a guy like he has a normal garage. How the fuck did he get this car? Is that also orchestrated by the... By Leshy? Whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. But also like, I don't know, like, he's clearly just a big fan. Like, I think he could have just gotten into debt to get it. Yeah. Okay, well. And now he doesn't have to repay that. that. (laughs) I did feel a little bit attacked later on. Like, there's a, the, when the wax museum guy comes in and starts talking about his collection and he's like look at this jacket that i own and i was like don't do this to me <laughs> wasn't it a leather a jacket to too <laughs> it was he was so proud of his leather jacket well i mean you you didn't your jacket isn't from anything it just looks briefly like dean's yeah. D- does everybody even know that I? <laughs> yes, everybody <laughs> knows. Great. No, that I w- dress up as Dean, Dean Winchester, Winchester for, for your graduation high photos. photos. Yes, I for my high school so. graduation photo. <laughs> do people know that? God. Well, now they do. Do you want people to know that? I mean, there are if- truly atrocious pictures. Honestly, if I'm being so for real right now. But yeah, it did happen. Yeah, I mean I I Why was Castiel for Halloween. Like Yeah, and I thought it was for your birthday. <laughs> for my birthday No, that's embarrassing. No, oh for my birthday I had the perfectly normal activity of making a Castiel cardboard cutout that was six feet tall yeah. with my friends. That you put in your closet and people that would I come in and be like closet. Um is that Castiel supernatural? Yeah. So true. Dean's driving per huge. And like Sam and Dean are talking about a job, the thing that we saw in the cold open and sam is so annoying <laughs> what sam is so annoying what did like, they do I think it's the acting also like jared Fatalecki is just being like so what's this job and it's like <laughs> okay <laughs> and okay i thought i had this episode was i remember back in the day when i was like I just, I like Dean so much more than I like Sam because, like, Sam is so mopey, which is, like, now looking back, what a mean thing to say. Say about his girlfriend, his his girlfriend is dying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I was like, he's so sad. He's too sad. It's so annoying. And now I am feeling it again. And it's but like he just went through sad. the most traumatic thing. He's not I even sad. <laughs> But, like, every time they do, like, a sad piano music over him, and it's like, girl, why are we doing this? I didn't notice I the hate, sad piano music. I hate mopey guy characters so much. And girl characters, too, that are mopey. Hashtag, Hashtag equality. Hashtag equality. <laughs> <laughs> He's not... How is saying what's with this job mopey? No, it's just... It's the way it's delivered. Like, like normal, like like, um, like a guy who's been tasked <laughs> with delivering exposition. No, exactly. Like, if you're gonna deliver exposition, just be a little bit more interesting about it. I believe. So you should have gone. Oh, what's with this job, gamers? <laughs> <laughs> that a fix? Well, he, if he did, maybe I would have been like, "What's up, back to you, gamer." And it would be a fun time we'd be having right now. Uh, It would raise a lot of questions about Sam Winchester, I think. Would Sam Winchester be a gamer? 
I don't think he would be. He's like a Tetris gamer. He does like Tetris championships. That is his vibe. God, yeah. I'm sure Sam fancies himself a chess like connoisseur. Oh god. Or <laughs> I mean, He's okay, so he, was, he definitely tried to join every chess club that was available to him, but he could only stay for a few weeks, and I don't think he ever got that good at it. Oh well, don't make it so sad because I just called him annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah, well, well, but both things can be true, except both things aren't true, because he's not annoying, so. <laughs> there well, you he's go. annoying and endearing. He's a killjoy, and he's so funny about it. Yeah, he's hot, and he's cold, he's yes, and he's no, he's in, and he's out, he's up, and he's down. Yeah, so. there's a really good Yakuza AMV about that, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're we so need a tangent. We need to be on. Yeah, we need to. We need a shorter recording time. Okay, Sam unannoyingly asks about the job. Dean is saying, "Like, isn't it weird?" And Sam just keeps insisting, "Like, hey, shouldn't we focus on the apocalypse? Like, hey, that's happening right now. Hey, let's look for the cult. Um, hey, aren't we gonna kill Satan?" And Dean. I guess he reveals the time skip, which says, is they've been okay, looking for but three Dean, weeks. I mean, if we're gonna ice the devil, he's... I, what? I don't know why I'm so pissed at Sam this episode. Dean is definitely much more annoying, but... I have no... Yeah, Sam didn't do anything I thought was annoying. No, it's just that, like... I mean, later on, it gets verified that Dean is being mean to him. He's not I being knew very immediately. <laughs> How? You didn't know? It, from this discussion. I mean, I don't think this discussion is mean. I think it establishes that the arc of the episode is going to be that Dean is of like... Of course. Uh, what being mean. <laughs> well, I mean, I just don't understand why Sam was like, and this is training wheels for me. And I do appreciate Dean saying that like, no, Wait, our so Dean's called it training team. wheels. Yeah, so, but not for Sam. For well, the it's obvious well. that it's for Sam if Dean's like saying end of discussion and deciding he's calling all the shots. Well, they're training to have this dynamic. <laughs> the the dynamic of, of Dean being in charge of everything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I mean, that Dean really thought that was no what sense. they were training for. I mean, Dean really did think that was what they're supposed to be training for. And then Sam <laughs> goes, no, Dean. And Dean was like, ah, okay. Yeah, okay, fine. Dean was training both of them. To- I don't think Dean needed any training to have this dynamic. <laughs> to be so annoying. Like, a dog yeah. owner doesn't think that they're training themselves to be a dog owner. Well, they should. But it- they don't. <laughs> well anyway so sam who's a wonderful person and has never been annoying in his life asks (laughs) if we're gonna ice the devil and dean snaps kind of this is what we're doing okay end of discussion and sam sighs and just looks unhappy about this situation and dean Tries to, you know, make it nicer by saying that this is our first real case back at it together. We should ease into it and put the training wheels back on. He says we. Yeah. So? People (laughs) use we to talk about everything. And also, like, he is the one who's putting training wheels on Sam. Ugh. (laughs) So I mean, I'm not gonna defend. I'm not gonna defend Dean's character that much, but, but I'm gonna defend it a little bit. And more, you already have. I think, like, it's because we didn't see the three weeks. That's why I am, and because you already think um, terribly about Dean, and I try to think uh. of him benevolently. That's why I'm like. No, <laughs> because we didn't see the three weeks, so I can just apply anything to that, etc. 
So, oh, you say he was so nice for three weeks, and then suddenly with Paris Hilton case, he was, like, authoritarian again? No, I mean, it's just that when they parted last time, it seems like Dean really was trying. And now, perhaps the fact that they didn't really talk it out or anything, they just decided to go back into the life, is catching up with him. And he's beginning to be a bit pissy about it. So, yeah, it could very well may be that he was nicies in the three weeks. And now this is like the breaking point of, I thought I can move past it, but I can't. And here's now Sam saying like, here's like, let's move past it by talking about it. And maybe if we talk about it, we can. Wait, okay. And this is better than my interpretation because like, why is this a good look for Dean because you were just like and he meant to be this way this entire time yeah and he did but yeah okay (laughs) but like this is a deliberate choice though he is saddling Sam with research while he says terrible things to women in bars yeah it is deliberate and that's my point (laughs) what (laughs) no my point is that at some point in the three weeks he decided to be a dick (laughs) yeah okay so you're just saying that he decided to be a dick more recently than three weeks ago yeah no because like the implication of he was a dick this entire time was he decided the moment that he and sam had that bm moment last episode that he was i didn't i don't really have an opinion on the three weeks i just think dean's terrible for what he's doing right now he couldn't be doing anything in the three weeks no, but I I want to put the context in of like you're spending three weeks of your life interacting with someone that just shortly before you have decided to like never see again and you've resolved none of your issues. You have just decided to just like let's go for it. Let's just be normal again. And then like the feeling of like, oh, but that's not actually how it works is starting to creep up on you. Like, I have some well, empathy Sam for that. Sam spent three weeks with someone who hates him, and he's still a nice person, so... Yeah, and that person is himself, so... <laughs> Dean also hates him. <laughs> I mean, but, honestly, I, I thought fascinating the, the way Dean conceptualizes it at the end, which is that I also started the apocalypse. I will like, not, yeah. I, I started yeah, the, that I was, I appreciate seal. that that was there, but I will never forgive yeah. Dean for talking shit about Sam on the phone with Bobby. Well, would you have rather he talk shit about Sam in front of Sam? No, I think you could just like <laughs> keep that shit to yourself. If you don't have anything nice to say, say it behind their back. <laughs> no, li- the point is that he's supposed to be trying to move past this. So, like, if no, you I have that thought, you either talk it out in a constructive right way with somebody, or you just don't. I like- love toxicity. <laughs> I love being terrible, etc. Only Sam is allowed to be toxic, and he's not <laughs> because he's nice. I am sick and tired of blah blah blah. What? <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> no, of like, and Sam is the better character because he's nice. And like, I well, just, don't, I just, it doesn't interest me. I don't like nice characters. I don't like mopey characters. And Sam is both of those things. And he's also a killjoy. But so we're what currently now? arguing about Dean's morals, not about how interesting he is. No, but what I'm saying is that I am able to look into Dean's morals more because I find him more interesting than you do. Not more okay. interesting than you. Than you do. <laughs> and then, and so, so I am able to impart that kind of generosity and thought towards him. Okay, because I find Sam boring right now. Okay. Well, I find Sam interesting, and I think that him and spending so there's still three weeks... And generosity in thought. <laughs> I, I think that this episode does a good job of showing the effects of spending three weeks with Dean. Like, Because, like, Sam did go in being like, I'm going to prove myself to you, and, like, I won't and let then you it's down. Just, like, it's so and obvious that it's not happening. Yeah, that, like, yeah. yeah, that nothing he's doing is changing how Dean thinks about him, and that Dean still thinks that he's calling the shots. 
blah yeah. blah blah and they're not back to what they are before and i think that yeah this shows him at like a point where he's like no stop it in a way that's constructive and i think that it's i think the episode does yeah. a good enough job with sam already I so think, i don't have to say much I, more everything that like especially towards the second half of this episode like it must be so gratifying for sam to be like i'm gonna put myself out there and speak my mind and yeah. it works. Yeah. Like, for the first time in forever, it works. Yeah. And, like, that must feel very yeah, I gratifying. Think for him to be at a place where he's even able to vocalize, like, part of why I went off with Ruby was because of an issue with our former dynamic. Like, he had to be sitting on that for, like, years. And, like, when the apocalypse happened, he probably felt at first, like, I can never tell Dean this because, like... I can never, like, not be guilty about this, so I'm really proud of him for making it to this point. But that's yeah. for later. Yeah, everything actually that we're talking about is for later, but let's not get into <laughs> no, it. No, what we're talking oh, about is for regarding Dean is for now, but yes. I want, to, I want to inform the audience that I am saying things recreationally in this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> well, I'm saying things professionally. But yeah, I, yeah, I am saying things for the fun of it. In case people take me so seriously that I think toxicity is good. <laughs> well, I think I mean, it's bad, is but I'm also saying like, that Dean had to be a dick for the episode to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, he didn't yeah. need to be all the other things that he was this episode, but yeah, yeah he didn't need to be a dick to Sam. Yeah. So I I appreciate it from a writing standpoint, from a uh, if Dean was a real person standpoint, I would I dislike miss him Cass. heartily. Let's go back to Cass. Oh. It's true. <laughs> it's fine when Cass is toxic. <laughs> it's fine when Cass is toxic. And every time Cass is on screen, I literally am just like it's having so much fun. It's kind of unreal. Sam goes flatly unhappily so you think i need training wheels and dean goes no we we need training wheels as a team <laughs> <laughs> and sam's Hell like yeah okay and dean calls this a fresh start for the both of us he really wants it to be a fresh start and i believe and him sure as, <laughs> as sam says okay <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then this is the part where the special guest star Paris Hilton flashes on screen, which yeah. is pretty fun. Yeah, good for her. Well, is it just because I couldn't get JDM? <laughs> no, literally, I was thinking, oh, they didn't put special guest star Jeffrey Dean Morgan here, so they, she's not going to turn into yeah. John. I, I think it's because I couldn't get JDM. The absolute hilarity of her about to touch the axe, and then it's like, no! We can't get JDM on screen right now. <laughs> no, literally, that's the entire thought process. We can get Gandhi, but not JDM. <laughs> they can get real Gandhi? <laughs> no, what do I'm you just, mean they can get no, Gandhi? No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, I'm saying things recreationally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, so. we uh, we go to office of a sheriff this sheriff does have a personality that we see throughout this episode he's not just some sheriff guy yeah i mean he's there to be like bad at inference so yeah. sam and dean can laugh yeah be like a hacky detective or whatever he is they show their fbi badges which i did miss unfortunate that i actually like supernatural can you believe mm. it i i can believe it how how would you say you believe it? What what are the proofs of uh concept that I love supernatural? Like about once a week, like I get on the Zoom call with like you, right? And then you say the words <laughs> I love supernatural. <laughs> this so is probably season from that. five has been season five has been treating me moderately well in terms of the loving supernatural. Mm -hmm. they investigate the death of the guy who just died and the sheriff shows the video that was recorded and then he says that oh obviously the guy who was recording was the one who killed the dead guy because that's just what happens 
so Sam and Dean insist on interviewing the guy anyway. And when they do, he tells them, the car did it. At first, they're like not believing. And then he says, it's the little bastard, like the car. And Dean knows this car. So good for him. And uh, yeah, I think we mentioned it earlier, but it's like James Dean's car. Dean is very excited. He was like, okay, we're going to check this out. Yeah. Oh, and also the guy they're interviewing says that he says that the guy who died had been looking for it for years. So clearly, like, he's a James Dean fan. So we go to the garage. Is it still the garage of the guy when he died or is it just a different place? But wherever it is, I feel incredibly sad that I wasted all of my car fucker Dean jokes last episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were like, Crystal, he- you can't say he fucks the exhaust pipes. He does. He does, though. <laughs> he wants to fuck this car. Dean loves cars. He really does. And I think last episode, I also said he's a one-car guy. Oh, he's God. not even a car guy. He's a one-car guy. No. Or maybe I didn't say it then. You did maybe say I said he it was a one-car guy okay. recently. Yeah. But he's not even a one-car guy. He's a car-car guy. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. He literally, he literally will. He, were you the one who was like, he's going to watch cars in a drive in? <laughs> yeah, in a drive through theater with baby as a date. Yes. Yeah. And he's gonna, he's gonna whistle when the blue car comes in, who's the love interest. And then literally. He's gonna stop baby's, uh, whatever that part is and go don't worry baby you're still like the most beautiful car in the world (laughs) i don't know if i said that part i think you're just riffing now but i enjoy the riffing no you definitely did you definitely did did. okay well congrats on passing me for being funny i i said the drive-through date but i don't know if i said the rest i'm gonna look up porsche Oh my god, I did say it. I think he gave a little whistle at the blue Porsche who's the love interest in cars and then immediately he was like, oh no, don't, oh no, don't worry, baby. She'll never be as beautiful as you. I guess I did <laughs> say all that. <laughs> literally. This is literally what Dean is doing in his free time. But yeah. anyway, he is so pleased with the car. He starts explaining the lore which is, yeah. you know, fun for him because he's not usually. This is not usually his job. I don't think he. I don't think Justin Ackles plays it excited enough for it to like surpass the. This is clearly exposition. Vibe I mean that that one, but he does go underneath it, and it is a scene. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing is when Sam is doing exposition, it's very clear that it's exposition. But this one is supposed to inform us of a character of Dean, which is that he loves to, he loves cars. I don't know what he, he loves, loves to. to <laughs> he loves to what, Gray? What does he love to do regarding cars? <laughs> well, he loves to look at cars and talk about them. Who have talked? Yeah. yeah, but I think I, the fact that it's meant to be a character thing makes it like a worse scene i think because worse of the acting that Jensen performance is, yeah. yeah incapable of carrying it through because usually when sam's delivery exposition is because he's trying to like deliver information to just Dean, get so, over like, it. it yeah matches up so check this out dean that's his house line <laughs> and yeah well the story is that the car crashed and then the wreckage was being fixed up by a guy and then the guy gets killed by the car falling on him. And then blah, 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 blah. And so the car is like haunted. Yeah. And uh, Dean is like, oh, the guy who was looking for it for a million years didn't know that the real trick was looking at the engine. He mm-hmm. only looked at the outside. He should have looked at the engine. And so Dean looks at the engine. So yeah. <laughs> the way he fucking looks at this engine number is so ungodly funny to well, me. Well, before he first yeah, off, before he goes first down off, there, yeah. First off, Sam volunteers, and Dean goes, "No, no, no." <laughs> and he's a little, he's like scared, he's, you know. He looks scared. 
But, yeah, like <laughs> he's supposed to he's supposed to be playing scared that the car is gonna kill him, but all the like breathlessness just really yeah. seems like he like, wants to fuck the car. Yeah. And then he he caresses like the hood of the car or whatever. And then he goes, Okay, baby, I'm not gonna hurt you, so don't hurt me. Which is So like- you know how last episode we said most things people call cheating isn't cheating? Him <laughs> calling another <laughs> car baby? That's cheating. <laughs> I take back everything I said about like Yeah. We were just the social constructs around monogamy. <laughs> we were speaking recreationally. This is I'm and dead serious here. This is now. cheating. <laughs> Literally. There's this iconic shot of Dean, like people gif this to Helen back where he's on that thing that like rolls under cars and he has a pencil in his mouth and then he he rolls into the car and you know, it's a whole scene. People would recognize it from anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I've seen it before. I've but definitely I have the Dean Winchester it. tag blocked. So. Yes, this is true. I could have the Sam Winchester tag block just for funsy so we can be equals, but it's never going to happen because I do like Sam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He rolls in there and the number is so visible. Yeah. I don't know why he has to take an engraving of it. He could literally just say what the numbers are and out like, loud to Sam we, and Sam could write it down. I, what he I could thought was going to happen, it. what I thought was going to happen is he's going to go under there and he's going to tell Sam, Eight, yeah. zero, what? Like, I literally... Like, why else would you do this? Why would you put yourself in so much danger? Touch the car, even. He was yeah. touching the car. I feel like that's the number one thing you shouldn't do in this situation. Mm. But, you know... Well, he couldn't, Dean was couldn't keep his hands off her. And it's like... There's, like, a lot of tense moments where it's, like, it's shaking. Oh, no, it's going to fall on him. Blah, blah, blah. But it literally isn't. Like, we're all lying to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again, he takes an engraving of the number. Except we, at some point, we look through the camera at what he's doing. And it's nothing. <laughs> it's yeah, doing nothing. Yeah. The engraving doesn't do anything. It's just a fucking scribble. Like, the letters aren't deep enough or whatever to actually cause the letters to show up. <laughs> It's yeah, hilarious. I because it's not like it's above. Like, it's not... Em- I don't know what the difference between engraving and embossed is. Embossed is it's upper, right? Like, it's protruding yeah, out. I think It's so. not embossed. It's, like, engraved into. Yeah. So, like, the, 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 the thing that you are going to get is going to be not as prominent as if it uh-huh. it was embossed so i have no idea why they're doing this at all yeah and then also yeah and i i do find it funny that like after that one shot they were probably like oh yeah it looks really bad and they just away. never show it to us ever again <laughs> yeah yeah also while dean's Iconic. under the car there's a very comedic moment where like like, we have a side view, and then suddenly Sam's head pops down because he's, like, flung himself under the car-ish also, and he goes, need a, need a flashlight? And Dean goes, so don't, true. don't do anything, just go away. Like, okay, he says, like... don't even look at her, she might not yeah. like it. Like, bro. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Dean is truly a character. He is truly a character. Like, he was so kind to offer Sam baby, like, at the end of 502, because, like, that <laughs> now was, that like, I understand his their vibrator, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now that I understand their relationship, I forgive Dean for never making Sam drive that car, except for today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Well, anyway, he gets he gets the fucking engraving, but he doesn't really. I don't even know. And it doesn't even matter anyway, so who give a shit? And then he sends Sam out to have to do research for like an entire afternoon while he, I don't know, does things. And what he does, we'll find out. 
So he's at a, a tavern called the Green Dragon, fun name, and he's talking to a bartender who is, of course, a hashtag pretty woman. And he's doing the thing that he did before he in did before, Shadow. Yeah. Was it Shadow? I'm not yeah. sure what it was, but it was a... Yeah. Oh, um, It's what? terrible. And the thing yeah. is here, it's like even more... I don't know, because last time it was like a passing remark, I feel like. Like he was like, oh, I told her I was a uh, an agent. Is mm -hmm. kind of how I remember that scene being. Versus this one where we see the actual conversation with the woman. Yeah. Right, so it is horrific to watch. So he's trying to flirt with her by lying and basically doing the if you sleep with me, I'll get you a job thing. Where yeah. he goes, so you want to be an actress, huh? And when she says yes, he pulls out a business card and says, Oh, well, that's so funny because I'm an agent for William Morris Endeavor. And, like, she takes the card and he's, like, laughing it up about how he is being sexually predatory and he thinks that's so fun. Sam calls. Sam's info is that I mean I guess we don't have to discuss that more. It's just terrible and Dean should die, right? Yeah. 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 Sam's info is that he took a it took a long time, a lot of research. Sam says it took like the whole day, but he found all the car's previous owners. He's just wearing a shirt. Who? Sam. The costume choices this episode are pretty fun. Like earlier, there's one where Sa Sam where Sam and Dean are like out of their jacket so they're in their white Mormon core button downs and <laughs> it's and this crystal said it was a Mormon core and then in this one Sam is wearing just a t-shirt and it's the gray t-shirt wow shout out to me but no it's a gray t-shirt I feel like similar to stuff the he wears later on in the show yeah mm -hmm. like the gray one you know you know the one right you yeah know the one. yeah the one yeah also um, when John gets mentioned later, I was like, wow, and Dean's not even wearing his Dean Winchester is daddy's little, what's that? Daddy's blunt, <laughs> blunt <little> instrument. instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dean is not even wearing his daddy's blunt instrument leather jacket. And then afterwards, he wears it, which is hilarious <laughs> to me. So but, true. Yeah, the costuming this episode is pretty fun. The car's history... Sam starts saying it, but then he hears the pool balls near Dean, and he goes, Dean, are you in a bar? And he goes, no, I I'm in a restaurant. Which, honestly, isn't that much better if you're not going to bring Sam anything back for his meal. Like, rude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then we have the bartender come back and tell Dean, here's your beer. And Sam's like, uh-huh. <laughs> And Dean goes, that happens to have a bar. And Sam complains that he's been working his ass off here all day. And Dean just goes, like, world's smallest violin, pal. I spent the afternoon up Christine's skirt. I needed a drink. You did not spend the afternoon. We saw it, and it was, like, two minutes. <laughs> And, and also that was thing. that was sexually exciting for you. That was like a good <laughs> thing for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this was Sam's whole day. And like I don't wanna get into the Sam girl, Dean girl debate anymore, but isn't the idea here <sighs> that Dean thinks that Sam deserves to suffer? Or that he huh. deserves more than Sam does? Well, I suppose so. I didn't really think about it, which is, you know, typical of a uh, yeah, Dean typical girl. Dean I cannot girl. believe, I cannot believe we have gone back to being a Dean girl versus Sam girl podcast. I thought we were past this. I thought we yeah. were all just Sam girls at this point. You know that one. <laughs> you know, like when people are like, "I love that your podcast is Sam girl." Well, I'm sorry for betraying literally everyone. <laughs> I mean, the people who say that are not Sam girls because real Sam girls know that neither of us make the yeah. cut. 
If you if you saw the Sam girls that I interacted with, you would throw up. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just like there is a degree of Sam girl or Dean girl ism or cast girl ism even that mm-hmm. just becomes extremely difficult to maintain once you're in the show, once you're watching it week to week. Like at some I, point, something's gotta give. And for me, it gave like season four, season, yeah, that. I was completely on Sam's side in every single step of the way. Mm-hmm. And I hated it. That was being. nice. But <sighs> yeah. now we are back. Now we're back, baby. But yeah, such is how it is. Or, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. It's not. I don't know if it's like Sam deserves to suffer. I think it's like. But I think it is the whole thing. I think like, it's. Sam has the yeah. training wheels on. I'm in charge. So, like, I delegate tasks. I can have fun. Sam's making up for the apocalypse. So I like, mean, it could also just very well be. I don't want to spend time with him, and he's going to do the research anyway. So I'm just going to, uh, which is. I mean, I'm not saying that as like an excuse, as if that's a benevolent they thing. Like yeah, obviously, and also it's they not. They haven't inspected the body like, I yet. Think, ah, you're right. Like they could be separate, and Dean could still be doing something. Yeah, because typically when they're like. Apart, separate. Both, yeah, yeah. Doing a they're task. both working the case. Like one of them in, is interviewing yeah. a witness, and one of them is doing blah. So like, it is a deliberate choice that Dean is like, this is like you do all the hard stuff right now because I'm in charge and I don't want to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I do think that part of the I needed a drink could be like the I want to get away from you thing. Yeah. So yeah, and I feel like I feel like every time Dean has been slightly mean to Sam, like he thinks, well, he started the apocalypse. Like it is an yeah. <laughs> easy go-to sentence for him to think to justify his actions to himself. Sam has found that nothing about the car is haunted. It is a fake little bastard. We cut to the house of a man named Mr. Hill, who we find out later is a professor at, like, the University of Canton, Ohio or something. And his maid comes in, and she is Latina. Specifically, she's from El Salvador, she says later. And she tells him that she's done. And She has an accent. Yeah, she has an accent. Um, and she tells him that she's done and he bids her goodbye. But then he yeah. breathes out, the air is cold, and he turns around <laughs> and he goes, Oh my god, it's you. You're dead. You're dead. You're supposed, You're supposed to, be, to dead. be dead. I would assume it was a guy in a fucking costume. Like, how do you well, know? No, first of all, you're supposed to be dead. It's such a funny fucking thing What's to like say. What's say about Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> like, like, I dreamed that not always. That was first thought. But, that yeah, I was like... That was the first thought. That is what you, you say think. to, like, like, someone you murdered or, like, your ex-wife who, like, died, like, ten years Recently. ago. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, not the person who has dead. been dead pretty much your entire life. I mean, definitely your entire life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. What a Absolutely. silly... Like, when it was revealed that it was Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> I did laugh. I was like, why did yeah. he say that then? Like, you're supposed yeah. to be dead. I, I think the idea is just that he's such a big fan of him that, like, it, he does feel like a close person. This is friend, real so to him. Reacts. The way that you would to a close personal friend. Like me when I see Caravaggio, I'll be like, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> but I always knew that you would come back for me. For real. I mean, I also want to use this platform to ask an important question, which is, how do you pronounce his surname? Lincoln? Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln as in linked Lincoln. in without the D? I guess that's how I say it, Lincoln. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good to know because I've always just said Lincoln. <laughs> so, yeah, it's Abraham Lincoln. But, like, again, there are Abraham Lincoln impersonators everywhere. Like, 
I would not see a guy who looks just like Abraham Lincoln and go like, oh my god, it's Abraham Lincoln, come back to life. I'd just be like, that's some good makeup. But so yeah. like he looks like convincingly Yeah, he doesn't even real. look that much like the existing photos of Abraham Lincoln. He just he's just wearing a top hat. Yeah, he's got the correct, like, style and stuff, but I don't think his face is really that similar. Yeah. Um, like, it's more similar than an average person's face is to Abraham yeah. Lincoln, but, like, it's not, like, exact. Do you think they couldn't hire a James Dean? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> People they couldn't hire. Jeffrey Dean Morgan and a James Dean impersonator. Real. He, like, sort of growls at Mr. Hill, like, with his teeth showing. And, and then, like... Chokes him he, out. Yeah, he chokes him out. And there's a big splatter of blood that hits a Into framed a copy of the Emancipation Proclamation that is hanging on this guy's wall. Oh my god. Because later it's, like, he was, like, a Civil War professor, so it's, like... Like, I, but like, yeah, but like, being a Lincoln fan is like a different thing than being a Civil War professor. So, like, he really true. likes this guy. Like, I think that the, I think the framed thing is like, he's like a real Lincoln fan. No, but Why like, would you frame the emancipation? I don't think, like, yeah. What is it supposed to be your biggest idol? Because I genuinely do not buy that Sam's biggest idol I think it's just, is Gandhi. I think it's just anyone who you admire, it's like who you admire enough. Because it's like the Wax Museum didn't have every everybody. Yeah, well, we don't have to think of this then as he's like a Lincoln super fan Lincoln yeah, super I think fan or Lincoln the, the Emancipation Proclamation framed is like I mean that could Lincoln just be like a, a professor thing like that it is an important document I guess I, I mean guess. I guess I don't know I'm trying to rationalize it because not for this guy, but for Sam later. Like Sam. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think that that's his Gandhi biggest posters. hero. Yeah, but yeah. So I'm trying to think of like maybe he's just like he's a professor and like he also admires Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> he all yeah. So like you know it mm. it just so happens. Yeah, I just feel like whoever decided this. Just doesn't know that much about the Emancipation Proclamation. Or, okay, I guess he could admire it as, like, a strategic move and not as a civil rights move or whatever. I guess that is typical Civil War professor behavior. All right, I have no criticisms. I think what's interesting about, like, a lot of professors is you would expect the, them to deal with complexity about their uh -huh. subject matter. But yeah. also, who is the type of person, person who would to get be like, this? I want to spend my yeah. whole life teaching this topic, <laughs> exactly. Which is yeah. where the crux is, yeah. Yeah, like, some people are into it because they find the complexity interesting, and some people are into it because they're like, oh my god, cool Abraham stuff. Lincoln yeah. was, like, such a good guy. Like, you can, you can learn the complexity, of course, but if you come in already thinking a certain mindset, which... Well, that's kind of that you have to choose to be this kind of professor. There's a whole police hubbub about this. And the sheriff is saying that like I don't know, this is gonna be there's there's gotta be an explanation and he goes like it's a professional killer and they're like trained assassins and they don't leave fingerprints and all that. And Sam and Dean are just like Okay, well can we talk to the witness? And the sheriff goes, well, sure, but she's not making any sense. And she's not making any sense in Spanish either. Boo! So, yeah, this is where we talk about it, I feel. Yeah, like, like, just this line just does so much work regarding the, oh, this is racist for real scene. Yeah, the tone <laughs> setting of this scene. Yeah. 
like, yeah, because before it was like, this is a stereotypical role, and I wish that Supernatural had Latinas that play, like, other roles. But, like, here it's like, oh, no, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's, like, it's very gimmicky, the way it yeah. is. It's like, oh, boy, like look at it. this new challenge that we've thrown up against the brothers. Someone who I can't think for speak me, it's English. That- it's that they would only do this if it has to be a contrived plot thing in this way. Like they won't Supernatural won't ever just have a character who has an accented English or who yeah, speaks or Spanish yeah. primarily. Just because. Mm-hmm. Or, I don't know, maybe they do in the future. I feel like I would know though if they did. <laughs> but okay. Uh yeah, so yeah, like no, here, it's, like, it's so we went out and we hired like, this person specifically yeah. because we wanted for this her gag. only thing to be that she can't speak English very well. Also, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I think I think people have talked about the lack of translators in like police departments, and I oh, think I've mostly heard about yeah. it regarding um like domestic abuse in immigrant families because usually the husband is the one who's doing the abuse and is also better at English. So, like, he can, like, shape the narrative, like, in the way that he wants it to be seen. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It It is... Like, police shouldn't exist, but if they do exist, they should have translators. <laughs> yeah. She's saying that she's from El Salvador, which, as you said, she mentions. Mm-hmm. And she witnessed the thing yeah she's very shaken about it yeah and so sam and dean approach her about it and dean is the one who starts talking first and you know he's speaking in english and he's saying that like well um did you see something you did right and she's speaking in spanish and sam pushes dean aside and i was like okay I'll, i'll i'll try and he like tries Apparently, he did freshman Spanish. Yeah. And I'm assuming at Stanford, because freshman yeah. could be high school or college, but I feel yeah. like you need like a consistent year. Very good year for, I feel of, like a ve- that's very good for one year. One s- yeah, for one I mean, year. Not, or what, one semester, maybe. one year maybe. or one semester, yeah. I'm not for sure what semester. Stanford's foreign language requirements for graduation are. But yeah, either one yeah. year or one semester. And it was a while ago. It was eight years yeah. ago. You have to practice this shit. She's saying that, well, uh, she saw someone tall and someone with a bigote. So a beard, a mustache. And... Well, he doesn't have a mustache, right? He just no, has a beard. a beard. Yeah. And also, like, she's describing the outfit. She's describing the hat. And there's, like, a whole thing where it's, like, she goes, oh, he's wearing a sombrero. And Dean's, like, like he's wearing a sombrero. And mm-hmm. Sam's, like, no, 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 like, not sombrero like that. Sombrero, like, just a hat. And she describes it as big. And then she, like, keeps on motioning that it's, like, tall and tall and tall. And Dean goes, oh, like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I pronounce it different every single time I say it. It's not. I don't notice. Uh, and she goes, exactly. Like the President Lincoln. Sam and Dean are like, oh, what? She says Abraham Lincoln killed Mr. Hill. Yeah. And then, yeah. And the point is, like, the last... Like, she's been speaking in Spanish, but the last line that Abraham last Lincoln line, killed yeah. Mr. Hill is in English. And the point is, like, oh, like, we're going to make it understandable to everyone at the end to make it so, so funny. And, like, I think that adds on to the whole, like... I don't know, like, they only brought this character in for the gimmick because the point of her, like, shouting it at the end is, like... She's, like, sort of, like, overcome with emotion or something about it, and she's distressed. And, like, I feel like you don't do the work of, like, translating stuff into English when, like, you're saying yeah. something, like, very distressed. So it is just, like, for the... It's just a whole setup for, you know, the gimmick that we mentioned earlier. Not yeah. a fan. 
not a fan. I, we keep on saying this. I wish there's more people in Supernatural. And people of different kinds. Yeah. <laughs> different kinds of people. Yeah. And Supernatural just fails so severely at that. And when they do have a person that they don't usually have, it's always this kind of gimmick. So, mm-hmm. not fun yeah. for me. They will never hire a person of color unless they're to be a person of color. Yeah. Isn't that so annoying? Yeah. We're back to the motel. And Dean's watching the video of, like, the car death at the beginning. And then he sees, like, a reflection of a guy in one of the wheels. And then... He calls Sam over and he's like, wait, like, doesn't that look like James Dean? It looks like nothing. It looks like a blur. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how I don't know, Dean maybe knows like of this. The, the red jacket is like an iconic James Dean look or something. Well, I'm super, I, I'm sure it is or maybe it isn't. Yeah. Isn't everything black and white back then? <laughs> 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 yeah, most of the photos on his Wikipedia page are like all of them appear to be black and white. Wait, no, no, no. Oh, he no? does have a red jacket thing going, I think, because there's if you look up James Dean red jacket, there's a jacket that okay. he wears. So they start discussing like, wow, like I guess we have like famous ghosts going on. Like that's dumb. Well, Sam first makes the um, observation that he's. Like, that the ghosts are killing their fans. Dean calls that Muchos Loco. And that's clearly just like a... Muy. Yeah. Sam goes boy, not Muchos. And, yeah, I think... Ugh. Yeah, first, Dean is so annoying. Because, <laughs> like, clearly, he's just saying that as, like, a... Isn't it funny that we ran into someone who speaks Spanish today? Isn't that, like, a funny thing <laughs> yeah. that one experiences in one's life? And I think that the, the Sam correction is positive. I think, I like, this, they're also just making Dean take the offensive role. And so Sam asks the, like, asks the writer. As the other one, yeah. Can go like, ah ha ha! I know it looks racist, but not really, because <laughs> Sam's <laughs> correcting him. Yeah, yeah. So it's Which, like, yeah. So, so it's we're fine. just making fun of Dean right now for say shit. For so being, it's yeah. fine. But like, we are introducing the initial idea that like someone who speaks Spanish is something that one could laugh at. So like, yeah. It's like, you could have just not done any of it in the first place instead of trying out this <laughs> yeah. balancing act. They're saying, like, why are the ghosts here instead of, you know, where they were during their life? And then Sam does a little bit of research while Dean is drinking soda by the sink. And then he goes, you gotta be kidding me. We don't see what it is, but Dean repeats this sentence. And they go to a wax museum. Yeah, the wax museum thing is actually pretty cool. I liked it. Yeah, no, they keep playing it as like wax museums are so weird and no one wants to come here. But it's like, I think they're kind of cool. Yeah. When my dad went to LA, he went to the Madame Tussauds one. (laughs) (laughs) And he took pictures with the basketball players, which is so typical dad behavior. so correct of him. They go in. And it's dead silent in this space. Like, there's nobody here. Which is brought up later when the, like, museum... What is he? A curator? Yeah, I Or guess owner. So. Yeah. When the museum owner says, like, Oh, we're a bit busy. And Dean, was, <laughs> Dean looks at the completely empty hall like, Oh, this is busy? And he goes, well, it's busy later. It's early right now. And he goes, it's 4.30, which I did find pretty funny. Like, I'm sorry to this guy. Mm. But yeah, the implication is that, oh, it's so weird. The wax museums are so weird. And the people who run them are so weird. It's literally fine. Yeah. I get like... And also, these are the like point really just nice like, Yeah, they are really nice. I think yeah. the idea is that it's like creepy. 
But, like, you are yeah. literally in the supernatural show. Like, get over it. Dean walks up to Gandhi and says, he's short. <laughs> yeah. And Sam says, hey, Gandhi was a great man. And Dean goes, yeah, for a smurf. What is yeah, this? No, I, oh, wow. Like, okay. Uh, initially, what when Sam this? said, hey, Gandhi was a great man, I was like, I thought short's was, not was that like much of an insult. Like, if Sam thinks short is an insult, like, maybe he does disrespect Dean and hate him so much. But then <laughs> Dean really just brings it home by being quite rude about it. So I guess Sam anticipated correctly. Again, like, they're playing the role of someone who is an asshole. Yeah. And, and someone, someone who's, who's like, who haha, not. look, I'm not an asshole, so therefore the show isn't terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the morality yeah. of the show is fine, because we have one person and saying, that's kind I, of fucked up, dude. I don't even know if that's... I feel like for the Gandhi stuff, like, it seems like... Because it's like, 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 later Sam's embarrassed to say fruitarian, so like... Is it is it even guy who's an asshole and guy's not a, who's not an asshole or is it like funny guy in wet blanket? Like what does Julie Siege pe- think people are seeing here? Wait, Dean's supposed to be a funny guy. I think that with like a lot of the Gandhi jokes, it feels like Dean is like a funny guy and Sam is a wet blanket. Is the dynamic that they're going with? Yeah, um, which is I worse. don't know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It could be what they're going for of like Dean's being funny and Sam's being so serious and a killjoy. Sorry for calling you that constantly, Sam, and now defending your honor. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you're right. I mean, but Dean is not funny. So Yeah, Dean is not <laughs> funny. But I do think that we're supposed to be like on Dean's side later when he's like oh my god like you pick such a loser guy to be a fan of like I think we are supposed to be like ha ha <sighs> so true Dean yeah so that's why I feel like with the Gandhi stuff it might be why, why is, uh, I mean what? I think Sam is a loser for completely different reasons <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah yeah, like <laughs> I think I, I mean, like I think I, he's a loser for liking Gandhi, but like it completely yeah, but different for other reasons. reasons mean things. Like I think it's fine to like a guy who's a fruitarian, but yeah, there are, there are other reasons to be a loser for liking Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, 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 and also like just I'm being surprised saying, like, they didn't bring up the like you don't really do the non-violence thing though, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mentioned it to you earlier, but like when when Sam was like when Sam was like, I thought Gandhi, the ghost or whatever, was trying to take a bite out of me, but he can't possibly be because. And then he takes a boss, and there's like a really long why. Why is he not gonna eat you, Sam? And I literally thought it was because he was on hunger strike. <laughs> Like, I genuinely was so afraid that that's what I was they were gonna also say. waiting for that to happen, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they, I feel like they're, they're, they're thinking about Sam thinking Gandhi is a great man only extends as far as, like, the not even Gandhi quote of be the change you wish to see in the world and not. I don't know, yeah, I guess same with Abe Lincoln. Like, they made this episode about people who are fans of people, but I don't think they actually looked into those people further than the pop culture knowledge about them yeah i mean there is you know like the the first one is like a fan in a very like dogged um looking for the yeah okay Carway. they did and do like, research point, about james dean that they do they did know things about james dean for this episode i don't think they knew things about abe lincoln or mahatma Gandhi. no i mean like what i'm saying is the mm-hmm. guy who was looking for um the james dean car like you don't really get to that level of doggedness Mm-hmm. Without at some point, like, kind of forgetting that the person was a person, <laughs> yeah. So, like, I like, I don't know, like, it's not like they're saying that, like, and the way this person admires this for per- this idol is the correct way to do right. it, 
And I mean, Dean's idol is apparently John Winchester. So obviously, <laughs> that's not the point they're making. That like, this person has an accurate idea of what their idol is like. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Sam has an inaccurate idea of what is admirable about everything in the world. Yeah. Better than your hero being John Winchester, though. <laughs> what a... Imagine if... It, <laughs> that's so funny. What a funny, funny thing. And they can't even hire JDM. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was busy being on The Walking Dead along with Lauren Cohen. This is true. So Sam and Dean tell this owner that they're here to write uh, an article about wax museums. And how non-sucky they are. And they ask about the Abe Lincoln and the James Dean exhibits. And the owner like, says that, oh, the people who died are our regulars. Yeah, and that professor et cetera, comes et in to stare at the statue of Abe Lincoln yeah. like every week. That is, that is something. Yeah. And the James Dean one too. Do you think those two are gay for each other? The professor and the <laughs> the two the two friends who were into James Dean. Maybe I, they were triangulating this idea. Yeah, <laughs> I did think that there was maybe something going on, but then the other guy died real fast. So yeah, it's the triangulation of desire. Exactly. So apart from those, he he also says that what sets this museum apart is that. There is actually like real things from the owner, from like from the person from that is being modeled after, that the wax model is wearing. So like Abe Lincoln's hat is the hat, and Gandhi's glasses are his glasses, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So these these uh, wax figures have the remains, quote unquote. Of their owners, which is a pretty fun, like, red herring. I mean, it's not a red herring because the god does use yeah, does the use remains, them. right? I'm surprised that they don't get more visitors. Like, Abe Lincoln's real yeah. hat. Like, that's an iconic, like, yeah. item of the guy. And there are Abe Lincoln fans out there. And, like, what it, what it is for me is that's what you're going to pay for. <laughs> more yeah. than the wax figure honestly yeah just to see like, his hat you're gonna pair for the artifacts which these are artifacts and they're just on display they're like that you can just the touch open. them like there's no glass around like how did yeah. that hat survive yeah I no idea I think this guy's lying <laughs> Not because, or else the, or else Leshy wouldn't have been able to transform. I suppose. Yeah, this is true. Also, I think earlier you were asking how, and also this guy is like, he's like, oh my leather jacket, it's also an artifact from the font seasons two through four, and this guy like keeps on double thumbs upping. Which mm. later on, Sam does do. <laughs> he thumbs up this guy, which I thought was fun. And I mean, mm. I am a bit, um, you know, like, I don't like that they're making fun of this guy. This guy did nothing wrong. Yeah. And he's, I think, you know, I mean, he falls under the same trap, I think, of the other people of, like, quote, idolizing these people in a, in a way that is not, indicative of their value as people mm. but whatever i think it's cool to collect stuff <laughs> so yeah that's my hot take that is so not true. hot also sam says wow yeah that's really cool ish which i thought was <laughs> extremely rude that's so yeah, rude he should have just is. said that's so cool yeah i mean yeah. sam have you never had to go yeah sure that's interesting to anyone <laughs> Do you think Sam has ever done that? Like, oh, that's interesting. Or is he the type of person to be like, I need to be honest to this person. <laughs> and I just want to say that's interesting-ish. I think that if you're around Dean, you can't call everything interesting because Dean will keep talking. This is true. 
they need to tone each other down. Eventually, they, you know, decide that they're gonna come back to this wax museum later that night. So Sam is uh, cocking guns. In the, yeah, no, it's a very in the funny transition because it's like we're in the like museum, the lights are on, like everything's happy. He's giving a double thumbs up, and then we immediately cut to like the dead of night with like ominous music playing as Sam like <laughs> loads up guns. Yeah, yeah. And then as he goes into the room, he, the door is like ajar. So he just steps in and Dean can't hear him and Dean's back is turned towards the window. And he is talking on the phone. Uh, and, you know, he's talking about, oh, we have this case, we have this case. Oh, why is it happening? I don't know. Probably the apocalypse. Yeah, we all know whose fault that is. And then uh, maybe, like, Bobby on the other side was like, Dean, don't say that. And he goes, well, I'm sorry, but it's true. And Sam is there. Yeah, Yeah. this is horrible. This is horrible. Thank you. I did feel feel immense, like, I thought we were trying. (laughs) But as again, as I've said earlier, blah, blah, blah. But (laughs) yes, Sam gets upset by this and then, like, makes the door make a sound so that Dean will see that he's there. And Dean hangs up. And he just proceeds like normal, like nothing has happened. And Sam just says like, so are we just going to pretend that I didn't well, first hear he all asks that? who was on the phone and Dean says Bobby, yeah. thus confirming for Sam that Bobby only loves him as a co-worker. <laughs> no, Once imagine more. if that was Cass. Like, for a second, I was like, <laughs> for what a second, is I thought Cass? it was Cass. <laughs> Did and you? I, for a second, I thought it was Cass. Yeah, I appreciate the idea that Cass is defending Sam because he, he's like secretly like, well, it's my yeah, fault. Well, I honestly, if we door, think man. about it, <laughs> but he's never gonna tell Dean that ever, mm-hmm. ever in his life. So yeah, yeah, unfortunate. And yeah, and Sam says like, "Are we just going to pretend?" And Dean says. Pretend or don't pretend. Whatever floats your boat. What a and dick. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I, he's just so like, I'm not going to apologize for what I said. It's true. Like, that is what he's saying. And it's yeah. like, wow. Wow, Like, Dean. it's I'm your glad job to out. think whatever you think. Right. Like, when you back came back, said. you said you were going to prove yourself to me. That's not a two-way street. I can do whatever. <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah, Dean says, this was, uh, Sam says, this was supposed to be a fresh start, Dean. And Dean says, well, this is about as fresh as it gets. Now are we going out or not? And this is like, like what my quote analysis of Dean and Sam and Dean's relationship up to this point from the three weeks comes from the most. Because like, I do believe, like, Dean wanted to do that fresh start. It's just that the where that fresh start is keeps getting moved back and back and back the more they don't acknowledge what's happening mm. or what happened, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Like, I fully believe Dean was like, let's do a fresh start and now fully believes that this is as fresh as it gets, <laughs> as he right. says. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, he doesn't announce fresh start. Until, like, today, though. Yeah, I, I mean, there is that implication already, like, last episode's final scene, right? Well, last episode was, I'm gonna prove myself to you, I know you will. So, like, I yeah. feel like Fresh Start is like, I'm gonna try to move this to a new no, stage. I'm, I'm, I'm talking mostly about the... We're, we're gonna go hunting again. Like, you know, the implication of the thing. Not necessarily the words exchange. Like, they were gonna go hunting again. Specifically, like, Dean being like, well, you're the second best hunter around. With the... Well, those with, are also in combination the words. To the, no, no, no. Like, Wait, what do you in mean? Com- yeah. Like, like, the, like, it's not about what specifically said there, like, the words itself, but, like, the implication of it, of, like, like, I am not gonna wait for you to prove yourself i'm just going to act as if you have already and then the further they go it becomes more clear and clear that like that's not what's happening 
It's oh. it's the same deal with the with the knife, like giving the knife. Like he could have withheld that knife, you know, and could have been like, okay, let's wait a little bit. But he he gave it immediately, and I think that's the right decision. But right. I'm sure throughout this thing, Dean was Dean also thought like, was that the right decision? I don't think I read Second Best Hunter the way that you did. Like, I think I just read it as, like, I'm making a joke to diffuse the tension. I don't think I've read it as more meaningful than that. No, I like, you said, too, last time we talked about it, that it's it's supposed to inform, like, a return to normal. Yeah, as in, like... So... Like, let's... Yeah, yeah, a return to normal as in, like... Yeah, a return to the former brother dynamic, I suppose. But... Are we are we talking about the dynamic regarding the job or like them as brothers right now? I think them as brothers because okay yeah 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 okay so I guess the second best hunter joke is like a let's return to how we were as brothers or like I'm attempting to do it. It's just but. the job and the brother thing is completely inseparable to them. I mean, Sam tries to quit and Dean basically goes, "Let's never see each other ever again." <laughs> like it's inseparable for them. Like, yeah. s- Sam left for college, and to Dean, that's like, yeah. well, you're not a hunter anymore, therefore you've left the family. Mm-hmm. And the only way he can be back in Dean's life is if he's hunting with him. So, like, it's not really a distinction one can make, especially Dean Winchester as the one. <laughs> I feel bad for Sam, and he's probably been trying to tell himself the whole time that, like, it's okay, I'm like still trying to prove myself, blah, blah, blah. And then hearing this is like, well, Dean's not trying back. Yeah, yeah. They go into the museum. Oh, right, no. I think, right, my one other thing was that the sting is definitely stronger because Dean sent Sam out to prep the trunk with all the guns. And so, and apparently it was so that he could talk shit about Sam to Bobby <laughs> yeah. in the motel room. And like, I mean, that's Sam a was major su- asshole move. Yeah. Sam was already suspecting that Dean was, like, avoiding work to do something else. So is he now thinking that, like, oh, Dean went to that bar to bitch Talk about me. Talk shit about me more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't be a good feeling. They re-enter the wax museum and they go in and take off Lincoln's hat to burn it. And Dean's, like, joking around putting the hat on. And Sam's like, whatever, let's just do the job. And Dean's like, you're a killjoy, but okay. So Sam starts staring down Lincoln. And I really have no idea why he's doing this. Why is he doing this? It's for the suspense. This episode is ungodly short. It's the same reason why they did the car thing. It's because this episode is ungodly short. It's like 39 minutes long with like a two, three minute soon section so right that's crazy yeah so this episode well, is pretty short yeah so i don't know maybe he suspects that like the wax museum or the wax statue itself did it maybe he's just like looking at the he's maybe he's just admiring the details of the statue but yeah he's staring lincoln down it's suspenseful like their faces are very close um but then the doors slammed shut and won't open, and then his breath comes out visible, so it's cold. And then, so he's pointing his gun, but then the gun flies out of his hands, and then Gandhi attacks him, not the statue, a separate guy. Yeah, and they make it the point of showing the statue still be there, not yeah. moving. Mm-hmm. So this is a different person, this is a different well, not, yeah, obviously, different person. But, like, I mean, like, this is a different thing than the wax statue. It's not the wax statue coming alive. Yeah. And, like, they shoot Gandhi's movements, like, kind of weird with the camera. Like, it's, like, slow-mo, fast-mo, and you can't really see his face. And I was like... Yeah. I I wonder who they cast for this. Like, why are they trying to hide the face so much? No. <laughs> I don't okay, I I don't think that they they cast like a white guy, but we'll find out during the IMDB check, I suppose. 
I mean, it's possible because I know that they cast a black man to play an Indian character in Hammer of the Gods. So, like, it's it's possible. Anything is possible. We'll find out. I think uh, what I assumed it was was because Dean goes, like, makes a comment that, like, he's squirrely. So I thought they were trying to convey that oh, via with the camera movement. Yeah. yeah, perhaps so. You know what? I also just thought, like, Gandhi has a more distinctive face than Abraham Lincoln. Mm. So it could just... And also we have more pictures of him. <laughs> so it could just be... Yeah, like, it's harder to... Yeah, it's harder to find emulate looks a like face that properly. you know. Uh-huh. Which is probably the same reason why they didn't show James Dean. But it mm. is... Like, you're right. Because with Lincoln, they really do show his face. Like, they really show his face. Yeah. So, he's attacking Sam and, like, jumping on his back and shit and strangling yeah. him. And Dean rushes Sam in. Sam does a fun move where he, like, back slams a wall. Oh, yeah. To, to slam Gandhi off his back, <laughs> which I thought was pretty fun. Yeah, good for Sam. Dean runs in and... um. It really does not seem to be seeing the... He the goth. Yeah, yeah, he does not care. He thinks this is mostly funny. Um, and Sam's being strangled, but through the strangulation, he's like, Get the... Get the glasses! Um, so, Dean gets the glasses <laughs> and burns them. And then, Gaudi just immediately disappears. And as Sam's, like recovering Dean goes you couldn't have been a fan of someone cool really Gandhi again Sam is a loser for being a fan of Gandhi but for reasons other than what (laughs) Dean thinks are the reasons (laughs) yeah yeah so they're back at the motel and Sam is talking about how isn't it just weird the way Gandhi just vanished like, he didn't scream or fire out. Uh, well, I forget. Yeah. Uh, they really do scream, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they scream about sort it. Of. And, yeah. And D was like, well, I burned it. He vanished. Uh, sorry. But, yeah. Yeah. Why is Dean so in a hurry to leave this case? I think it's probably just a control thing. Like, Sam's mm. arguing for one thing, let's argue against it and go. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't Sam- know, I'm trying to think of a situation where mm-hmm. Dean would just be like, okay, I'll listen to Sam. <laughs> he was, he was like that in the earlier seasons, I believe. Probably. They, they had the more equal footing in season one specifically. I think they had, but mostly because Sam and Dean back then were treated by the narrative as like loser hunters. Like they don't really know what they're doing. So even if, say, Dean knows a little bit better what they're doing, not by much, Mm -hmm. versus now where they are treated as special little princesses of the story. Yeah, even though Sam's been hunting for longer because Dean was in hell for a few months. This is true. Like, but, hunting I mean, for longer, like, in the show. Dean was hunting for longer earlier than that. But, yeah. Yeah, I was going to make that point. But, what else? Sam says, and also, it's like he was hungry. <laughs> yeah, he was trying to take a bite of me. <laughs> but the thing is, Gandhi, <laughs> or the real Gandhi, he was, uh, <laughs> and Dean is like, oh, what? And Sam just like... Uh, doesn't want to say it and he just goes what spit it out and sam goes he was a fruitarian yeah so and see, yeah the humor for me right now is that sam thinks that, that sam like thinks a, this ghost... is a logical conclusion that a ghost will not eat him or bite him exactly the like person first, is fruitarian. most people weren't cannibals during their life <laughs> yeah yeah i so mean i think like, it should be the change. question should be like why would ghosts want bite to me? Because I don't can't. Think, like, why? Yeah, why like, would they want? It isn't a part of ghost lore that like yeah. they want to bite you. That should be the but question. But here, 
But here the question is like, why is Gandhi ghost trying to bite me when he was fruitarian? Like, wait, why is Gandhi ghost trying to bite you, period? Why yeah, why is ghost trying to bite you, period? Yeah. But the comedy to Dean is that Gandhi is fruitarian. I yeah, understand it's just that. Yeah. Funny that yeah, that he was a fruitarian. Which isn't even true. He was a fruitarian for five years and then went back to being a vegetarian. Dean keeps making fun of him for it and goes like, Oh, your ultimate hero is not only a short man in diapers, but he was also a fruitarian. Fuck off, Dean. Which Yeah. Fuck off, Dean. Yeah. But yeah. Like Sam is saying, like, I don't I don't think this is over. I don't think it's a ghost. But Dean, again, gone ho to just leave. And Sam says, so first you dragged me into town and now you're dragging me back out. And Dean says, you're not steering this boat. Let's go. But Sam doesn't. Mm. And he says, this isn't gonna work. Yes! Go I Sam. It. Go Sam and forever. Yeah, he says, uh, you and me together, I thought it could, but it can't. And Dean says, you're the one who wanted back. And Sam says, no, but you're the one who called me back in, which is yeah. true. Yeah. And Dean says, like, oh, we got some trust building to do, that's all. But Sam says, well, how long am I going to be on double secret probation? Which is a way to put it. And he really is, I think. Mm. Yeah. And Dean says... Till I say so. He doesn't even deny it. Well, this part, I'm like, Sam. <laughs> but he says, look, I know what I did, what I've done. And I'm trying to climb out of that hole. I am, but you're not making it any easier. And Dean says, well, I'm just supposed to let you off the hook. And Sam says, no, you can think whatever you want, which I love. Like, I, because like, Sam, for a while, for a long time, has been, like, I think so adamant on Dean being, forgiving him or being angry enough at him. Bobby forgiving mm -hmm. him. Bobby thinking he didn't do anything wrong. Bobby thinking he's forgivable. And it's, like, hearing Sam say, like, you can think whatever you want. Like, it is coming from a, a place of self-deprecation. Because he says, like, oh, I deserve it. Like, whatever bad thing you think of me, I deserve it. But, like, the point he's making here, which he says is, the point is, if we're going to be, if we're going to be a team, you and I, it has to be a two-way street. Which I, like, I love that kind of acceptance. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a matter anymore of you You should yeah. forgive like, what me you think whatever. of me. It's just, like, like fair treatment. Yeah. Like, forgiveness comes in layers. Like, forgiveness, you can forgive a person in action, but still blame them in thought. And what he's saying to Dean is, you can blame me in thought all you want, but you can't expect me to be here. And you're acting the way you do, and I will continue to be here. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. think whatever you want, but don't treat me like shit. Yeah, yeah. Good boundary setting. Good boundary setting. But also, like, for Sam, I do feel that is a character development thing, mm -hmm. right? That, like, I am going to ask for forgiveness and I will hope that you forgive me. But if you don't, there's other things to worry about. And there yeah. are other things to worry about. Like, I feel like Sam is the one who's been saying the word sorry in, like, all of season five so far. And, like, yeah. this episode, Sam doesn't say sorry, and Dean does. And, yeah, so Dean asks. And at this point, he's not, like, convinced or anything. He's still being, like, condescending when he replies. Mm -hmm. He says, like, so what? Are we supposed to go back to the way it was before? And Sam says, no, <laughs> because that was bad. We because were never, we were that, never way. that way before. Uh, yeah. Before didn't work. Go Sam! Love that. And he says... How do you think we got here? One of the reasons I went off with Ruby was to get away from you. So and true. Dean is surprised by this. This is a revelation <laughs> for him. 
Right. Like, he's what? literally been the guy who's like, you chose a Ruby over me. Like, you betrayed me by going off with Ruby. But, like, he never thought that it was to get away from him. Like, he thought these were just completely unrelated things. Yeah. No, I, I do think he thinks that. Like, I think he thinks that Ruby tricked Sam and Sam wasn't doing anything out of his own volition. And when Sam was like, no, I am choosing it. He ascribed that to Sam's addiction already and right. Sam's, um, like, you know, all the other stuff happening. Yeah. But he didn't stop to consider that, like, before all that, there was a reason why he was going off with Ruby. But he is very blamey about, like, you chose a demon over your own brother. Like, is that something you would say when you were, like... You were a hundred percent just being tricked, and then later when you made the choice, it was because of your addiction. Like that seems like a different idea caused that sentence to happen. I don't know. Like, there's a difference between you know, like choosing some. Like as you said, there's a difference between choosing someone over someone else, and like choosing someone over someone else to get away from the second yeah, someone else. I think that is different. So, so like. Maybe Dean was just like, you chose her over me and didn't connect the dot that to get away from me. It literally yeah. was just, you just chose. <laughs> yeah, Again, like, Sam, you think Dean, I'm and so Jess. cool and great, but you had the audacity to think Ruby was cooler and greater. <laughs> literally. Like, yeah. all of these characters are so bad at self reflection. Like, so, so bad. <laughs> but yeah. And Sam says, it made me feel strong, like I wasn't your kid brother. Oh, I love the term kid brother so yeah, much when fun. Sam says it. Yeah. And Dean says, are you saying this is my fault? And again, this is delivered condescendingly. Like, after mm-hmm. this, I had no idea where the episode was going to go with Sam and Dean. Or, I mean, you know, I had an idea, but I didn't really know the specifics of how they were going to resolve it. Because Dean still feels incredibly cagey about everything. Sam says, no, it's my fault. All I'm saying is that if we're going to do this, we have to do it different. We can't just fall into the same rut. Oh, so and then they're going to. And then oh, they're going to. Right. Well, <laughs> let's the, not the think about that. In Memorial. <laughs> well, I mean, they're not going to. It's not the same it's not the same problem over and over again. It's different problems. <laughs> but it's problems nonetheless. This is the part where there seems to be something changing with Dean. Mm. Like, because when he says what, I think that was the first time he was like actually taken aback by something Sam was saying. Yeah. With the, you know, like, I went off with R- Ruby to get away from you. But... Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, yeah, he asks, like, what do you want me to do? And Sam says, you're going to have to let me grow up, for starters. But this gets disrupted because Dean's phone rings. And then it we, we are made aware that somebody else has died. Or somebody else, something weird has happened yet again. Yep. So this is, you know, Supernatural really is such a format show. Like, mm. it really is a, I don't want to talk about it, Sammy. I don't want to talk about it, Sammy. And then Sammy says something. <laughs> and it's like, okay, let's talk about it at the end of the episode. And I yeah. love that for Supernatural. Mm. I love to be taken on an experience where Dean doesn't want to talk and then does. <laughs> yeah, well, so we're back at the police department. And something weird has happened. So they go and interview these two teen girls. And they're not being that clear about what happened. But somebody who uses she, her pronouns took their friend Danielle. And Sam's like, it's okay, just tell us who took your friend. And one of the girls goes, it was Paris Hilton. And... They go to talking about how, like, she looked really good and skinny or whatever, which I don't know. (laughs) I don't know, man. (laughs) 
I guess the idea is because they're like really big fans, so they would be focused on these things in addition to their friend getting kidnapped. But I, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> it just feels like a teenage girls are dumb <laughs> sort of thing that they're doing. Sam and Dean are like, oh, like we have to talk in private, and they walk one step away. <laughs> And whisper so, so loudly. True. You know, like I fully thought because of the camera angle as well in this scene, I fully thought that the sheriff was gonna like pop up behind them or something and be mm. like, "What are you talking about?" Or yeah. like somebody, somebody at some point doing that. Because yeah. again, they're like one step away from the people they were just talking to. They're still pretty much inside the room. Like uh-huh. they're in the door, and they're talking. They're talking so loudly. The camera angle is making space for someone to pop. I don't know. This is just like that scene where they were fighting and they were like, let's step out for a bit. And then everybody, including Ellen, can hear their fight. Like, yeah, so this true. was just like when they were talking in the doorway to Bobby's hospital room about him. Yeah. And he said, I can hear you. Haven't they learned by now? But their whispered conversation is that Paris Hilton is not dead, so it cannot be a ghost, so they missed something. So, Sam's in scrubs now at the morgue, and I do think it's odd that after that conversation, Sam is still being sent out solo to do, like, the icky work. He's there, and he's looking at the body of the guy who died by the car, and he, like, cuts open his chest... And then he reaches in, and somehow, like, despite the fact there's there's, like other shit in there that he was also feeling, he was able to take out two small round objects from inside. And he's surprised by this, and when he comes back out, he explains that there was... A lot more blood loss than expected from the other bodies. Like, something was, like, drinking their blood. And they all had these seed pods inside of their stomachs, at which I wrote, OMG Mpreg episode? But we don't really learn what happens with the seeds. Like, do the trees grow out of the bodies? I suppose is what we're supposed to think. Can trees grow when they're implanted inside of someone's chest and don't have access to sunlight? I mean, this is a magical seed. I guess so. Well, does he just say it's like from a tree a that was seed? dead? Like, yeah, like a regular tree. It just is extinct now. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just a ritual I mean, it's, thing. It's, it's a seed he has never seen before. Yeah. It's a seed he's never seen before. And Dean goes, wow, just when I thought you couldn't get any geek here. Sam does some research and he's somehow able to find out the species that these seeds are despite the fact How that they were even? covered in blood inside of a man's body. And when he <laughs> washed them off, I'm sure they didn't look that similar. And also, like, they didn't have, like, reverse image search. And even if they did, like, I don't think it would have worked that well. <laughs> But yeah, I guess he's just really good at research. Um, yeah. He's research boy. Yeah. So he Gun finds... boy and research boy. <laughs> so true. Yeah. The hunting brothers. They are from a forest in the Balkans, which was chopped down 30 years ago. And they thought that the forest was guarded by a pagan god named Leshy who could be appeased only with blood from his worshippers and, like, drink all their blood and then put the seeds in their stomach. And I guess he just turns into different people by touching things that they owned. And he can be killed with an iron axe chopping off his head. They go to the wax museum... They open, like, the back door or whatever. So they open this area, and it's, like, a garden scene. Also, Sam whistles to get Dean to come over to him, which I think is so fun. It's, like, a very cute whistle. So, yeah, they see the girl 
and she's tied up. Like, Sam checks her pulse, and she's still alive, barely. And Dean is holding an axe. And then the axe, like, falls, flies out of his hands. And, yeah, Paris Hilton is there. Hell, yeah. (laughs) She looks like she's having a lot of fun. I hope she had fun on set. Yeah. She she knocks Sam out and then knocks Dean out with like a f- with like uh stomping on his face with her shoes. Yeah. And then yeah. They wake up tied up, both of them to trees. But like I just wanna say I don't know anything about Paris Hilton other than she's Paris Hilton. Yeah. I Nor I also I also like don't think I know her voice. Mm. And the whole time she was speaking, I was like, "Is that really her voice?" <laughs> I think it probably is. I mean, it is. It is. It's just me being like, "Huh, I did not expect her to sound like that." You know, like the because it's a face you've seen so many times, but the voice is always new when you hear it. Mm. But yeah, this is Paris Hilton. How did they get this? collab or i mean she could just be a supernatural fan is that true can we look that up okay paris hilton um okay it says that oh it says jared padalecki co-starred in the movie house of wax with her so they probably did the wax museum and the paris hilton thing like for fun because of that that's why dean says i haven't even seen house of wax Okay, it says that in Access Hollywood, there was an interview with Access Hollywood where she said she was a big fan of the show and was excited to be part of it. Do you think she's just saying that or was she really a big fan of the show? I don't know. The other thing that in the article I can't believe people are fans of Supernatural. Yeah. I, I mean, don't do many that. people are. Apparently. I feel like I talk to a fan of Supernatural every week on Zoom. There's this really fun thing they do with her where she is holding the knife and she's going over it with her nails and it's sending out sparks. I think I yeah. thought that was really fun. I mean, it made the episode hard to watch because it sounded really bad, but it was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought it was fun. Paris Hilton is saying, like, oh, I've been eating a lot of fast food lately, so it's nice to do the ritual right, prepare a nice, slow meal for a change, which is pretty fun. Mm. And, well, Dean says, I guess these days nobody gives a flying crap about some backwoods forest god, huh? And she goes, no, not since they cut down my forest and built a Yugo plant. Which, I do think... It's interesting. What are the things that... What are the concepts being talked about here? It's... Uh, it's that one. And then also, like, the concept of, Same. like, the United States being... um Having no God? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, their God, is, their God is celebrities and whatever. Uh-huh. I mean, isn't there... there there's that one tweet or whatever that was like you want to insult the british you in theory can just insult the queen but if Uh you want to insult like americans you have to insult mcdonald's or whatever (laughs) (laughs) this is true what else i don't know it's just about worship of gods and idolatry and celebrities and it is i suppose fun that it's paris hilton they're making do this speech yeah. Because that yeah. is Celebrity 101. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's the famous for being famous person. Eventually, Paris Hilton now wants to kill Dean. <laughs> Except yes. she can't unless she transform into she transforms into someone that Dean idolizes. And so Dean's like, oh, I don't even idolize you. I've not seen House of Wax. <laughs> but... She goes, no, but I know who you really idolize. Your daddy, am I right? And the axe apparently belonged to John. So she can just go touch the axe and turn into JDM. <laughs> and then drink Dean's blood. Slay. So she goes to reach for it. Dean gets out of his 
binding and then goes to attack her except she gets the upper hand and then sam also gets out of his thing and then he gets the the axe and then eventually axes uh once twice three times until the head rolls over and his face is super duper duper bloody so bloody which is so it looks fun hot. so fun and you know sam gets a word in with dean because yeah. he's like dude you just got wailed on by paris hilton fuck yeah while laughing and it is fun to see him laugh with all that blood yeah. in his face like yeah. ah so true love that guy so yeah i don't is the like you have no god you just worship celebrities instead is that at all supposed to be related to god being dead in 503 or is it just doing its own thing I think it's just doing its own thing, although you can relate it for sure. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it has its own thing. It's kind of silly, but oh well. It is supernatural. We return to the motel. Dean is on the phone with the sheriff, and Danielle's gonna be okay, like the teen girl. The sheriff is putting out an APB on Paris Hilton. (laughs) They are heading out to the Impala. Dean says, I was thinking about what you said yesterday about me keeping too tight of a leash on you. And Sam doesn't say anything. He just looks. He just waits. And Dean goes like, maybe you're right. I'm not exactly Mr. Innocent in this whole mess either, you know. I did break the first seal. And Sam says, you didn't know. And Dean said, well, neither did you. And that Aww. was a really nice moment, because I, yeah, because it's like, Supernatural and I will never agree on the demon blood thing, so I've given yeah. up on that, but like, but the this is like, thing. yeah, yeah, a good, yeah, the little thing, the breaking the first seal, like, the level of blame accordant, the Sam didn't know, like, I'm glad that we're finally getting to this properly, because all the previous episodes, it was just... Sam did this, and that was evil, and Sam is evil, so yeah, I'm really glad that they're at this place where like I guess Sam can maybe sort of start trying to forgive himself through viewing it as similar to the Dean breaking the first seal thing. Yeah. And like, Dean can also like yeah, like just both of them are forgiving themselves and each other through each other, and that's nice and it's nice that they're just yeah reminding us of yeah i am thinking about how like to dean at least there is a positive to come out of it like i mean like killing lilith is a positive thing the side effect of the apocalypse starting is negative and also the thinking demon blood to get there is negative that's dean's calculation Mm mm-hmm to Dean, it's all just negative. <laughs> I believe. Yeah, he did. He did the starting of the apocalypse through starting to torture people. Yeah. Yeah, because he was tortured for a long time. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> pretty horrible that one. Yeah, because Dean says, "I'm not saying demon blood was a great way to go, but you did kill Lilith. Um, who would have thought killing Lilith would have been a bad thing?" So yeah. he's like also acknowledging that they were all they all had the same goal. And yeah. then he says, "The point is, I was so worried about watching your every move that I didn't see what it was actually doing to you." And for that, is he talking about recently or just like their whole lives? No, I mean, ah, this line. Like because I, Sam I'm is saying like sure. it never worked in the past. Right, and I think it could oh, be a more recent thing. I'm more on the long term side because I think Dean might be responding to Sam saying like the mm. past patterns we were in didn't work and like yeah. made me. And upset. this could be conceived that way. Like you can think of it that way. Whichever way. Yeah. 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 So it's a reasonable Yeah, so it's like yeah, point, like part whichever. of my overprotectiveness and control is what led you to like yeah. go off with Ruby and I acknowledge that. Yeah. Yeah. Good for Dean for getting to this place. And 
I hope that... I hope that this does for Sam what Sam wants, like, for a I want to bring pleasure. up something. Mm-hmm. Um, you asked earlier, like, why is it that Sam is still the one who looked at the coroners? It's because Dean asks him what he wants to do, right? Um, is that what happened? Like, Sam says, like, oh, we missed something. And Dean goes, what do you want to do? Which, like, at that point in the episode, that was a concession. Or not a concession. That was a sign of, like, oh, Dean's taking it to heart. Because he asks Mm. Sam, like, what's your game plan? So the reason why it was Sam who was in the coroner's office probably was because he asked to be there. So what was Dean doing? I don't know. Probably doing research, whatever the fuck. Was he? Yeah. I mean, I think part of the charm of this episode is that Sam is the one who figures the case out. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they didn't get a call from Bobby being like, Bobby, like, says it's a leshy. Yeah. It, it is, is vital nice. that Sam f- is the one doing the research, I feel. Or, mm-hmm. like, doing the figuring things out, too. Like, narrative-wise. Yeah. Okay. I get that. So, after Dean says that, he pauses and he goes, So for that, I'm sorry. And Sam says, thanks. They discuss a bit. They come to, like, the same conclusion that they come to at the end of every episode, so I didn't even yeah. know why it was a new conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> every end of the episode, they will just say things like, we just need to do our own thing. Yeah, we, we just need to survive. Yeah. We just need to hunt. We just need to go down fighting. Like, you said that, like, day one, bro. Yeah, but this time, Sam is saying it. It's a yeah. theme. So that's the difference. So, yeah, so Dean asks, so where do we go from here? Which, you're right, the Dean asking questions is, like, a step in the right direction. Like, I will listen to you. And Sam says that we got one shot at surviving this. Maybe I'm on deck for the devil. Maybe same with you and Michael. Maybe there's no changing that. But we can stop wringing our hands over it. We just got to grab onto whatever's in front of us, kick its ass, and go down fighting. Dean kindly does not say, I said that like three weeks ago and also four weeks ago and also five weeks ago. He just goes, I can get on board with that. And Sam says, okay, but we're gonna have to do it on the same level. And Dean goes, you got it, which is nice. And finally, they're about to, like, get into the car, but then Dean goes, hey, you want to drive? So true. It's so corny. Congrats. I started crying. I... This whole, like, do you want to take the car? Do you want to drive thing that Dean does sometimes? It really does get to me. Like, Mm -hmm. it matters to me. And, like, as in, I kept on telling myself when I saw when this scene was happening and I was crying, like, full on tears flowing down my face. I was like, but it does matter. Like, it does matter. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. I was, like, trying to convince myself that it does matter. But the thing is, it does matter. I think it matters yeah. to Dean, it, it matters to Sam, it matters to me. So Yeah, I mean, the writers put it in because it matters. It I matters. Think it, it is a little corny sometimes, it's but corny I care. It's corny as fuck. But we are in the CW Supernatural, it's fine. Indeed, we are. And... Yeah. Yeah. So, Sam asks we you sure, and Dean says, I could use a nap. And they drive. Yeah, and also, like, you know, they drive, and also there's a C. What's that? There's uh, a. Like a next time on. section. Yeah. Which That's I just don't think we overview. really ever get a lot of. Yeah, I think we got, like, one I think it's just before because, this. I think it's because this episode is so short, like, honestly. <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. Um. We see bits from changing channels, mm-hmm. and um, a bit from, problems. I think, yeah, probably, and a bit from which one's the episode with the two Asian sex workers? Ah, oh, I forgot. There's also the one with the devil antichrist. 
Oh, yeah. That, who turns Cass into an action figure. Into an action Because Cass yeah. wants to murder that child. Just like Aziraphale. <laughs> just like Aziraphale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's feminist. It's literally feminist. <laughs> Do I explain that joke or what? Um, in the Good Omens podcast, in our Rubbish and Probably podcast, everyone listen now, on um, Q&A, um, someone asked about, like, female Aziraphale and Crowley, like, how that would have changed, and I said, would it be feminist that female Aziraphale wants to kill Adam because she's not being motherly? <laughs> and, and it is. literally is. <laughs> Oh, anyway, uh, what did we think about this episode? It was bad when it's bad, and it was yeah. fun, and it was good when it's good. Yeah, I think the Sam and Dean stuff was excellent, and the rest of the plot was, well, sometimes it was fun, <laughs> sometimes. Best line, worst line. Uh, what's well, your best line? The best line is we were never that way before before didn't work how do you think we got here let's go i mean my best line is you want to drive honestly like Mm -hmm. it it got to me it got to me what's your worst line uh i think think there's a lot of options Uh, Oh, when Dean's, like, lying about being an agent in the bar, that's quite bad. That was pretty bad. Uh, And she's not making any sense in Spanish, either, was bad. I don't like that Dean calls, um, like, great for a smurf. I don't like that line. Very rude. Very rude. Spread sheets. Spread those sheets. All right, we've got points happening. Misogyny, the lying in the bar thing, quite bad. Definitely. I think that's yeah. a two. Yeah, I think that is probably a two. Racism? Okay, there's like, the jokes in the episode are, it's funny that someone can't speak English and can only speak Spanish. It's funny that Mahatma Gandhi wore clothing that is not, like, Western clothing and was short yeah. and was a fruitarian. And then, like, the sheriff is dumb and wax museums are dumb. So, like, 50% of the jokes in this episode are built off of being racist. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think that could take us to four territory. Yeah, I agree. It's. I think it's a four. Homophobia. There's none in this episode. Yeah, I, I don't believe. think so. So what's our IMDb, IMDb ratings? What's our guesses? IMDb guesses. We need to specify that every time. I don't know. Like, I think it's like pretty good, but I don't know if people would like it. <laughs> Mm. Um, I'm just gonna guess same as 503, 8.5. I was gonna guess 8.4. Okay, well. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh my god, it's a 7.9. Oh, that's low. People don't like this one. Did they think the plot was, like, silly or something? I guess there's also the fact that it follows 504, so it's like, why are we doing a case episode now? Yeah. Like, that's weird. You can't tell me Paris Hilton is awesome for doing this. Wait, I like, no, no, no. Or isn't but awesome? They are yeah, they meant that- isn't awesome. Yeah, yeah, they think she's cool. Yeah. She th- they think she's cool. And it is cool, I think, that she did this. Yeah, the making fun of herself performance. She's She does do a pretty good job acting. This one says... There was some social commentary here. Some <laughs> scenes were funny. The brother tension was great and they made some progress. Also, yes, Dean, you two started the apocalypse. Stop blaming Sam. Real. I think both of them are probably fine. Like, it's all the angels' fault, honestly, <laughs> if we're being so for real right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's the angels' fault and also, like, the demons' fault. Yeah. Like, like I think because Sam and Dean like, are, like, important and they are, mm-hmm. but they're also just pawns. And I feel like 
they go back and forth, especially Dean goes back and forth between I'm a pawn and I'm so important. No one's <laughs> gonna hurt me because I'm important. And it's like both of those things are true. You're a very important sword is what you are. What are these? What are these says? How sad that even Hungry Hungry Gandhi knew that Sam's vulnerable spot was his throat. One of these days, the writers are going to have to address why every single evil thing the boys fight goes for Sam's throat. <laughs> Is this a pattern? I think you may just be sexually attracted to Sam Winchester. <laughs> This one says, I really do not understand how this clunker got made in season 5. It's probably the worst episode of the entire series and it has nothing good to say about it. The premise is silly and yet unfunny. The brother melodrama is forced. It's not scary. And Hilton didn't deserve to be on the show. What? (laughs) Okay, people do hate women. This one says... It didn't end great in my opinion. What possessed the writers to write such speech for Sam? I have tried so hard to find sympathy for Sam. So according to Sam, because that was what he was saying between the lines, everything is Dean's fault. He literally said it's not Dean's fault. Because of Dean. He drank demon blood because of Dean. Then he, with the same breath, he says to Dean that his big brother needs to let him grow up. It was truly ridiculous. Basically, Dean sacrificed himself to save Sam. He died. In the four months he was gone, Sam went and became and became demon blood addict. Part of being Ooh. adult is taking responsibility for your own actions and not blame your big brother for every single thing you do. Will Sam ever grow up and accept the responsibility he for his own actions? Literally has been over accepting responsibilities for his actions like the entire like rest of season five so far. He's been apologizing. He's been saying it's his fault. He said it was his fault like explicitly in this episode too. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy that this is a perspective that people can have. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, is it entirely Dean's fault? Everything? Obviously not. But, like, you yeah, cannot deny the... That, yeah, that he had a factor. The, the reasons for it. And, like, Sam yeah. explicitly says that, like... It's my fault. It, like, Dean yeah. asks, it's my fault? And, Dean, and Sam goes, no, it's mine. Yeah, like, it's my fault. We just, but in order to avoid a similar situation, we should, like, change Let's our not dynamics. put ourselves like, in such situations. Yeah, that is, like, a healthy, helpful thing to say. Wow. Yeah. This is growing up. Like, yeah. Sam is accepting. Sam kept on saying, like, he's punishing himself more than Dean will ever punish mm-hmm. him. Like, it's my fault. He keeps on saying. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Whatever whatever i mean yeah well that's it for this episode <laughs> of bossy asian beauties next week we will be discussing season five episode six i believe the children are our future oh it's immediately the next one leave us a rating or a view wherever you get your podcast wait which one is i believe the children are our future the kid who turns cast into a toy Oh, that's that's so funny. Okay. Um. Well, follow us on social media. We are on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B pod. Thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod, which is where our outtakes live. And check out our merch at babpod.redbubble.com. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautiespod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.